Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have quite an interesting beer. This one is supposed to be one of the best beers you can get from Sweden. So we're going to go to Omnipoyo who are based in Stockholm in Sweden and have a taste of the Nebuchadnezzar which is a double IPA. It comes in at 8.5% and on the website they tend to talk about it as Neb just as a short name for it but this is supposed to be a kind of cult classic Swedish beer if you like. It's almost to Sweden as um, the likes of the Brewfist, Spaceman and the Reala are to Italy. It's supposed to be that kind of thing so very very much looking forward to trying this one for you today. But as is usual then with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward. All of the usual links are in the Facebook description for you below. The brewery website, the link to my other reviews from El Nipio, which I'll add in the future. Very first time I'm trying something from these guys and there's also links there to my Facebook profile for the channel and also my untapped profile. So feel free to connect with me through whatever channel you like. Always enjoy hearing from you guys. So anyway, Omnipoyo was founded in 2011 by Henok Fenty, who is a long-time home brewer, and Carl Brandine, who is actually a clothing designer. But the two met one day and they decided to start a brewery together after they had a, a kind of long discussion about the, the craft beer scene, the insular craft beer scene in Sweden and abroad. And they wanted to essentially reinvigorate the craft beer scene from a stylistic and a gastronomic perspective so they felt that um, the partnership between a designer and um, a brewer was highly logical at the time. So the name Omnipoyo comes from omnipotent chicken so Omnipoyo so Pollo of course is Spanish for chicken so Pollo I've seen a lot of people pronouncing this as Omnipolo but it is actually Omnipoyo so I'm told but these guys are gypsy brewers and they have no brewery of their own and rather use spare capacity at other breweries and they have many collaboration beers as a result they've got some from America they do have one which um, is supposed to be very good that is brewed with the Buxton Brewery. It's got a little um, kind of KKK style bag on it. It's, it's quite an interesting one and quite controversial apparently too but a very good beer nonetheless. But they currently export to over 20 markets worldwide and they're continually expanding. Their second biggest market is actually the US after Sweden of course so if you're watching in the US you should be able to get a hold of some of their beers. And I've heard that um, one of my subscribers John Shepard told me that he's tried this one in Australia so there's a, these, these beers are quite widely available but recently they opened the Omnipoyo's Hat in Stockholm which is a collaboration restaurant with Pizza Hat and it's actually become quite popular in the city and it's got many of the Omnipoyo beers on tap and it has some pretty awesome pizza as well so when I finally make it up to Stockholm hopefully sometime next year I will have to go and try that because it's supposed to be pretty good but they've got a whole host of different beers if you go and check out the brewery website as I said the link is in the video description below but if you check out the brewery website they've got over 30 different beers listed on there so there is a big range that you can try from these guys so very cool brewery and my very first encounter with them so this one should be a very interesting beer so to tell you about the beer itself this guy is an 8.5 percent double ipa it's brewed at the prof brewery in lucriste hefte which is in belgium quite close to the city of ghent it's where mckellar and toil brew a lot of their beers as well but this one is a very decorated beer and it was rated the best swedish beer of 2013 on rate beer and it's also on the list of 30 IPAs to drink before you die so a very very good beer nonetheless the um commercial description that's on the website for this one is quite funny as well. It says, Neb is a home brew recipe that has been scaled up with no consideration to the economies of scale. Some say idiotic and as an economist I would have to agree. Get fresh or die trying. So yeah, pretty cool beer I have to say and it's got a rating of 99 on rate beer and I think 100 in the style. So very, very good beer. It has the um, the best by date on the bottle cap this one just a plain one and I read somewhere that this beer is meant to last two years so this would mean that it was bottled on the 14th of July 2015 so that makes the beer just a month old or just over a month old so it is very very fresh I'm filming this beer review for you on the 26th of August but you'll probably see it sometime into September but yeah should be a very nice beer for us to try eight and a half percent like I said you can see the artwork on it here looks a little bit like the American flag actually maybe because maybe it's done like that because this is where the um this style of beer comes from but very cool and all of the beers incidentally have very different bottle designs and that's obviously just because one of the guys is a graphic designer so without further ado let's get stuck into this guy and we'll get on with the tasting 
as you can see, very nice kind of smoky opening on this beer here. And we'll just get it out into the glass. I bought this at my local Sistiam Bologit, and it's quite a common beer to find this one in Sweden. Very, very popular. So it's really cool to review this one for you as my second Swedish beer that I've done for you since I moved here. I did one, the Rode Orm, which was from my local brewery here in Lund. And um, the previous one I'd done for that was the Niels Oscar Godlager, the Good Lager which um, was very nice as well, but they've got another couple of beers that I need to try as well, but very much looking forward to continuing this series of Swedish beers. But as you can see, I'll just shift the light so you can see the exact colour of this beer. As you can see, it's a very nice kind of bright orangey amber. This has got a huge head on it, about a two and a half finger frothy white head there. Looks very nice. Some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there, but quite a lot of small carbonation visible within the glass too. Just going up towards the bottom of that head there. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see that it's not transparent in the slightest. Definitely a rich orangey hazy golden colour. Um, no sediment actually visible in this one, which is unusual for a double IPA, but then again, when it is as fresh as this, it is only maybe about five or six weeks it's been in the bottle. When it is as fresh as that, sometimes you just won't get any sediment, but which is unusual for the style. Usually a lot of these double IPAs last for a very long time, and this one was good until 2017. So yeah, let's have a smell of this one, see how we get on. Yeah, very nice smelling beer actually. A lot of orangey citrus coming out of this one, I think. And you can smell the pine resins that kind of underpin this beer too. I want to say there's a wee bit of a lemony citrus in there too. You can pick up just that sharper lemony citrus element coming out of this beer. But a big orangey, juicy citrus. Some floral and aromatic hops too, and you can pick up a little bit of herbal character just under there. There's a huge nose on this beer, so a lot going on. Just take a little bit of time and smell it before you actually drink it. But a very nice nose on it. As I say, nice juicy orangey citrus in the first instance. Some piney resins kind of underpinning the beer. But some floral and aromatic character just backing that up. There is a little bit of herbal character in there too. But there's a good dose of tropical fruit as well. So I think I'm picking up some kind of grapefruity notes. A little bit of maybe peach, I think, as well. And there could be some sort of mango -y and pineapple in there too. But if you sugar it up a bit more violently, or vigorously, I should say, you can pick up a good bit of caramel sweetness in there, a good boozy caramel malt base, and also some kind of biscuity grainy character. So it has all of the elements you would expect of the double IPA style in the aroma. As I was saying, it's such a highly rated beer on rate beer that I know it's going to be a very good one and Omnipoyo are one are I think the best rated brewery from Sweden on rate beer as well so I'll need to try a few more of their beers while I'm here in Sweden for the next couple of years but yeah very nice smelling beer so without further ado let's get stuck into this guy this is the Nebuchadnezzar or the Neb as they call it from Omnipoyo who are based in Stockholm in Sweden Slange, Skål Now, even after only taking one sip of that beer, you have to say it's pretty damn awesome. So I'll just let my mouth adjust to it before I try and pick out all of these flavours for you. So just before you try and pick out the flavours yourself, sugar the beer around your mouth and just let your palate adjust to it. But beautiful, beautiful beer, this one. A hell of a lot of hoppiness to it, which is exactly what you expect. Yeah, I want to say with this one, the fruitiness is is more in the background than you would think from the um, when you think about the aroma. The piney resins and the aromatic floral character for me are dominating this one, but then the fruit comes out a little bit later on as you progress into the aftertaste. There's a nice big soury grapefruit flavour that comes out on this beer in the aftertaste. It really does smell of nice juicy oranges, but I'm not picking up much of that in the actual flavour. Now wait. Once your mouth adjusts to it a bit more, you really can pick up 
a little bit of that orangey citrus. As I say, the grapefruit and the big floral aromatic -y character and the pine resin in there, they're the three most prominent components of this beer, but you can pick up that citrus just behind the very front of the tongue as your palate adjusts to the beer. Yeah, huge big hoppy flavour to this beer. Like I say, around the edges of the palate you're getting a nice piney resin flavour. It gets a little bit earthy in the very back corners of the palate I would say. Definitely a little bit earthy at the very back, but you've got a nice kind of um, dry pine resiny flavour that goes around the edge of the palate there. It becomes a little bit more aromatic as you get to the front of the mouth. But then just behind that you'll get some of these fruity flavours in there. You're getting a nice slightly juicy orangey citrus, but that's quite a subtle characteristic of the beer. You might not detect it, but just pay attention to the little oily bubble that comes behind the very front of your tongue and you'll pick up a little bit of an orangey citrus in there. But that's where a lot of the tropical fruit's coming out from. And that also spreads around the edge of the palate. There's a big sort of punchy underlying grapefruit and kind of peachy flavour in there too. Definite, I think definitely some peaches in there. Not quite um, sweet and juicy enough to be mangoes or... Um, or uh, sort of pineapple, I would say, but there's a definite, there's, it's definitely peaches and grapefruit, I think, and that's just for me that I like to make my fruit juices, so I'm usually quite good at picking out these fruit flavours. But I want to say big grapefruit and big peachy, and not so much in the way of um, of sort of, do you say pineapple or uh, or mangoes? Definitely more of a kind of more sour peachy or grapefruit flavour from the tropical fruits in this beer. but you can feel the sourness as you drink through the beer, that kind of big sourness you get from the grapefruit, it becomes a little bit more prominent and it kind of smooths out if that makes sense. So when you're thinking about the flavour of this beer, keep paying attention to it for a little while because it does change as your palate adjusts to the flavour of the beer, but it's there's no question about this one. It's an absolutely beautiful beer. Across the middle of the palate, you've got a light, slightly bready, malt base in this one but there's a good bit of caramel sweetness in there and a bit of a kind of biscuity cereal flavour as well. Yeah. Down the middle of your tongue you get a nice bit caramel boozy malt base which is exactly what you expect from the double IPA style. And there is a light a bit of light breadiness in there and I would also say some kind of biscuity graininess but it works very well and it hides the alcohol in this beer really nicely and it complements the other flavours too. That little earthy hop character in the back corner of the palate also builds a good bridge between the, the slightly bready and slightly biscuity characteristics of the malt base into the hops. It gives you a good link with, to that kind of nice pine resin flavour that underpins the whole beer. The earthy hops in there are quite interesting. There is perhaps just a, just a very small touch of herbal character in there too and again the beer just blends together really beautifully but one of the, definitely a top class double IPA, very very good beer, so do try it if you get the chance. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, definitely mid-bodied. Carbonation on this is really soft and very very smooth actually. The beer is quite oily and that helps bring out some of the nice um, orangey and tropical fruit flavours from this beer. It works very, very well. There's a huge hoppy bitterness in this one and that smooths out a bit as your palate adjusts to it, but there's also a good bit of sweetness from the malt base and some boozy warmth from it as well, but not quite as much as some double IPAs. There's only a little bit of that nice boozy warmth, but overall this is a really top class beer and I can see why it's rated so highly on Rate Beer and Beer Advocate. A really, really wonderful beer and I can, as I say, one of the best ones from Sweden apparently, so do check it out. It's been very cool to do this as my second Swedish beer review since I've arrived here in Sweden. Hopefully I can try some of the other Swedish beers for you, some of the other um, Omnipoyo beers at some point too because they're supposed to be such an excellent brewery and these gypsy brewers do tend to produce some really excellent stuff. Think of Toil and Mikeller over in Denmark and then there's these guys in Sweden, really top drawer stuff so hopefully I can return to Omnipoyo at some point in the future but anyway as I say check out Omnipoyo, go and check out their restaurant if you find yourself in Sweden. 
supposed to be really awesome. This is one of the top IPAs in the world, apparently, on the th on the th one of the 30 IPAs to drink before you die. I would agree with that prognosis. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Please comment below and let me know your own thoughts on this one. Always interesting to hear it. Check out the brewery website. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Connect with me on Facebook or on Untapped, whatever you like. But until my next beer review, slange for now, and there will be many more from Omnipoyo and from Sweden and Denmark over the next little while. Slange just now.